Hi, welcome back to Broken and Brilliant. I'm Carrie O'Toole with Carrie O'Toole Ministries, and I am excited today to have my friend Amy Elaine join us on the program. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so glad to be here. And I just said your first name. It's You've got a last name, too. I do have a last name. What is it? Martinez. Well, thank you. <laughs> I don't typically say, hi, Amy Elaine Martinez. No. But anyway, I met Amy Elaine a couple months ago, and then she has a radio program that she invited me to be on, and I thought, well, you've heard my story, so I would love to invite you on our podcast and hear your story, because I know you have one. I do have one. All right. Well, I'm going to just let you start. And let's just go with this and see where it goes, and we'll just have a conversation. Okay, I don't really know where I'm going to start, but yes, I do have a radio show, and I loved having you on. I love to hear people's stories, and I love to, I think the story is such an important part of how we communicate and how we really just connect with people. It's a super easy way to connect with people when you yeah. hear their story. Well, life is hard, and... We all have stuff we've been through, you know, and that's the, maybe I'm weird, but that's the kind of stuff that I really love hearing because when I, I know, when I see people who have been through some tough stuff and they are doing okay now, you know, or maybe doing great now, who knows? I'm always interested in like, okay, what was it that you went through that got you to where you are now? Yeah, and getting to the path to the other side. I yeah. think seeing people on the other side of their pain is so encouraging to other people. And that's why we want to share our stories, right. really. Right. And so I would say that for my story, wow, there's so many ways that we could <laughs> You have go a lot of parts to your story. <laughs> there's a lot to it. There's a lot to it. I'm a mom of boys. I have been married for 25 years. It has not always been super easy or super wonderful, but overall it has been a huge blessing and wonderful marriage. We ran into some sticky issues about 10 years in. I mm -hmm. found myself in the exact same place that I had been 11 years earlier in my first marriage. And, you know, we worked through it. Mm -hmm. We worked through it. Mm -hmm. So there's so many different directions that we well, can Well, tell us here. about that sticky place. If, if you're okay the with it. The sticky place is... We'll just call it the sticky place. The sticky place. That's a good... That's good. The sticky place where you don't want to get stuck, for sure. Yeah. You know, I was married when I was very, very young and in college, and I ended up getting divorced really pretty quickly, about a year and a half later, and it was all my fault. Mm -hmm. I mean... I know there's always two sides to every story. It takes two people, really. It's not completely fully, but most of it really was my fault. And I cheated on my husband, and it was just, we didn't even try to fix it. We just mm -hmm. moved right mm -hmm. on, and we didn't have kids or anything, so it was not right. super messy. It was pretty simple, and we just moved on. Right. I was very broken. And I didn't really take the time to get myself fixed up and, you know, really fix the things that needed to be fixed before I went into my second marriage. And, and that happens so often. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. And it's like, if, if you don't fix it up, you're going to end up, you know, the patterns that were there are set. And if you don't analyze a little bit and have some healing, you're just going to fall into the same thing. It's true. And I did. I found myself. I thought I was doing all the right things. You know, I had, when I had my first child, I completely turned my back, my life back over to the Lord and started walking with him again. I had known him my whole life, but um, really that first kid made me like go, oh my gosh, what? I, right. I can't do this. I'm, I'm a mom now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yikes. So, but then I was 11 years into my marriage. I had, you know, I don't even know how old my kids were then, maybe seven and five. And I found myself in the exact same situation where I was getting ready to make a pivotal decision. And it was a really bad one. So what, what gets a person to that place where you're even considering that? What was going on in you? You know, I think that I had, like I said, not walk through any healing for what had originally mm -hmm. happened. And although I knew the Lord, I didn't know how much he loved me mm -hmm. at all. 
I really felt so much shame and so much guilt and like I had to do everything perfect and we can't do that. We can't live up to that. We can't. <laughs> and he doesn't want us to. You know, he doesn't want us to, thankfully, yeah. thankfully. And so I just I I think I kind of set myself up for failure. And and I found myself in this situation and in the moment that I was getting ready to, it was like a make or break situation. You're gonna either do this or not. I found myself and I heard what is was almost an audible voice of God. And it was not really audible, but to me and to it my was heart, very real. it was very yeah. real and very loud and <laughs> very unkind. And he just said, baby girl, this right here is not who you are. You don't have to do this. Mm -hmm. This moment right here is what my son died for. This is what I died for right here. You don't have to do this. And I was like, and for the first time, the scales came off, and not only did I see my situation for what it was, I saw my sin for what it was, but I also began to see me mm -hmm. and who God knew that I was. He always sees our future selves, yeah. the, the real, truest yes. form of ourselves. Yes. And he's so good to continue to love us through to that place. Even when we can't see ourselves that way, or we can't appreciate ourselves that way, or maybe we don't even want to be that person. Or it's like out of our realm of even understanding that this is a possibility of who we could be because all we see oh, yeah. is the shame. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't think I could be that girl. I had tried, you know, to be the good girl. And being a good girl doesn't get you anywhere. It doesn't get you anywhere because it's not a heart change. But when the heart changes, everything else flows out of it. You know, my husband and I have talked about this kind of thing in the past when we were struggling with some things. And I always, because I've got a, a degree in counseling, I always think about it like you can use behavioral modification. And, you know, and when we were starting to see some changes in our marriage, I would look at him and go, okay, are you just white knuckling it? Are, are you just, you know, gritting your teeth and I can't do that, I can't do that, I can't do or Or, like, is it really has your heart changed? Yeah. And that's what happened with you. It did. It absolutely happened for me. And I never looked back. I'm not saying it was easy. I'm not saying that it was, you know, just boom, I was all better, but I was ready and able to walk through the healing that I needed mm -hmm. to walk through mm -hmm. to get to the other side of victory. So what did the healing look like? It looked a lot like spending time with the Lord looking at his words, seeing what he said about me, and beginning to believe it. So how do you do that? How do you do People that? talk about that. You know, I mean, go, go even more if you can, if you remember. Yeah. Because it's like, yeah, you need a heart change. Okay. What does you that need look healing. Like? Okay. You need to change your thinking. I remember the first time somebody talked to me about changing my thinking. It was such a weird thought to me because thoughts come in. And I thought you would just have to think them. I mean... It, like there's no defense. If there. you have a thought, you're yeah. already thinking it. You can't do anything about that. You're already thinking it. But I didn't realize like you do have power. So what does that look like? It, you really have to stop the th thought process in like the, the first just the first moment that you realize that you are thinking negatively or thinking poorly or thinking just not wisely and replace that thought. It's not just stopping the thought. Yeah. It has to be replaced. If because you otherwise you're just it. giving nothingness yeah. and, and, and something is going to fill the void. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to replace it. Yeah. yeah. So how did, what did that look like? Can you give us an example of what maybe one of the thoughts was and what you had to do? Let's do you remember? See. Like, think about thoughts. I'm not sure that I can think about think thoughts. about <laughs> thoughts that I had, but what I did do was I literally stuck scripture on notes on my mirror. And so you were a crazy woman. I was kind of a crazy woman. I had all these little stickers, you know, and little post-its and stuff that just reminded me because I so often forgot mm -hmm. who I was. And when I could remember who I was and who God says I am, like you, when I would say just silly things like, you're so stupid. You're so stupid. No, I am not stupid. I am smart. I know things. I have everything living inside of me to be able to figure out this situation. And if I don't, then I know people that I can go to to help me strategize. Yeah. 
the stupid thing that was one of mine too yeah. And it's a big one. And neither one of us are stupid. I mean, you you run a radio program. You've written books. You are not stupid. And yet, isn't that funny that you walk around, oh, I'm so stupid. That was so stupid. Yeah. How could I have done that? That was just so stupid. And that was me, too. And you find yourself, and you do that, and you think, no, nope, I'm not going to think that thought. I'm going to choose differently. I'm going to, you know, you can do this with fear and doubt. You can think, I'm going to be fearful. I'm going to be doubtful. No, I'm going to be hopeful and expectant instead, and turn that whole thought process around in that moment. Well, we are a lot more powerful than we think we are. Yeah. We yeah. are. Isn't that amazing? And the power, I mean, when you think about yeah. that, that you don't have to live that way. You can make a choice that you're going to change how you think, and then it changes how you live. Yes. I think that that is, you know, we move from a defeated mindset into a victorious mindset, and we believe, begin to believe in ourselves and begin to act out of those new thoughts. Mm -hmm. And that's what, I mean, it starts in the heart, but it solidifies in the mind. Hmm. Because then, once you start to really believe that stuff, then you can walk it out from there. So at the beginning, did you believe it? No. Or, okay. <laughs> no. Were you faking it till you made it? You know, it? <laughs> maybe. I don't think I had that much process. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know that I really thought that out. But yeah, probably. I mm -hmm. probably did just kind of fake it until I made it because I knew who I wanted to be and I knew who I didn't want to be. I didn't want to be that girl who lost her family and all the other things that could Well, you happened. already had been. Yeah. You know what that's like. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I just thought I had to stay like that, you know? The, the lie... This is who I am. Yeah. I guess that's who I am. I'm a cheater. Yeah. I guess that's who I am. The enemy would say to me on the loudspeaker at night in my mind, once a cheater, always a cheater. You can't keep up this good girl act. Oh, Wow. Yeah. It's an act. It's an act. And when I learned how to replace those thoughts, like I said, and just say, hey, not listening to you today, not listening to that, it did begin to make a change. And I don't know that I actually, you know, made those conscious statements to myself, but I, I did have to consciously and very intentionally choose to have a different mindset and mm -hmm. to stop the, the negative. And that's mm -hmm. not easy. No. I'm not saying it's easy. It's and it doesn't years. happen, that, I was just going to say, it years. doesn't happen overnight no. either. It's like no. when you start to make those mind, when you, when you decide to start thinking differently, which for many people that might even sound crazy. Like, yeah. what do you mean decide to start thinking differently? But that was what it was like for me. And I didn't do it till I was in my 30s. I was in my 30s yeah. too. And all of yeah. a sudden you're like, you don't have to think the way you've always thought your whole life. So first it's a recognition that you can even choose to think yeah. differently. And then it takes some time because you you feel like a phony. Yeah, you'll... you feel like you're not being who you, who you are now. Right. Like you're just making it, it up. That's right. right. That's right. a good point. You I'm just, I'm like just you know, you can't just, oh, that's like you're just going to think your way into a new... Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, Carrie, one of the things that I think is really important that I feel like I need to say is that in that moment, something tremendous happened. In that moment, there it was an absolute breakthrough moment for me. But And it was a, a complete healing at that place. But I had to do the work, the yeah. heart work yeah. of making that a reality in my life. And I think sometimes th people think that, oh, God's just going to heal me and I'm just going to be different and it's going to be new. And sure, he does. There are cases where he mm -hmm. does that, you know, a drug addict who never, ever uses again. Yeah. But that's not often how he works because he wants us to participate with him. He mm -hmm. wants us to partner with him and come alongside and he wants to be our friend. Yeah, and sometimes he brings other people and he wants okay. to have it happen through other people. You know, when you said it doesn't always happen that way where right at the beginning the healing happens, I've seen it on the other side where there's been lots and lots of healing work. Mm -hmm. The person has done years and years of counseling and then there's a and he just lifts it all yeah like the doors fling yes why yes yeah yes so it can happen kind of either way and, and many choose. ways yeah. yeah 
And he knows you. He knows what you need. He knows me. He knows what I need. And so it's interesting. I was praying the other day. I I work with clients every day. And um, this was just like two days ago. And I was praying for the clients that I had that day. And I felt like God was saying, you know, at this season, I'm only bringing you clients who are ready to be healed. Mm. And I just was like, that's really cool. Because there is something about having a heart that is open to healing. Yeah. Instead of going, that will never happen. That's not me. That, you know, if, if we, because did you live through that for a while where it was just, I'm never going to change. I'm, oh, I'm yeah. always going to be this way. And when you're in that place, of course, healing's not going to happen. You're not even open to it. Yeah, because you can't see it for yourself. Right. Yeah. And I think we get so stuck in our, the ways that we think we have to be or that we've always been. Yeah. That we can't move forward. That is amazing. Well, and that's just one part of, you know, what happened. It, on that, that day that that happened, I didn't know. I thought the enemy was coming for my marriage. I thought he was coming for my marriage. And really, he wasn't. He was after something a whole lot bigger. Hmm. My husband didn't know the Lord then mm-hmm. at all. He had no relationship with God at all. And that's what the enemy was really after that day. So I think sometimes we think we can see, you know, it's it's all about this. And God's like, mm-mm. There's, there's, a, bigger there's thing. a bigger bounty on the battlefield. There's mm-hmm. something bigger out there that you are not even aware of. You see the, the main thing. That's but, right in front of your yes, face. Yeah. But there's so much more out there and for us to glean and to, to take possession of, you know, to get all that he has for us not just that one thing well when you say not just that one thing that one thing you're talking about is your marriage that's a big thing it was thing. a big thing and yet when we look at the big picture yeah. there's more yeah. even than just that you know i remember one time talking with some people about divorce and um i remember hearing god loves the people in the marriage more than he loves the marriage and, and that's hard. Just, People can't understand whoa. that. Yeah, yeah, but that's huge. Mm-hmm. So what happened? Um, you know, it was about three and a half years after that, that through a set of circumstance, which is a whole other part of my story, <laughs> where we were completely in debt. We, God set it up that we were able to sell our house like in a market that never would have sold right yeah. after the IT completely, right. you know, dumped. I remember. <laughs> and we were able to sell our house and move forward and move on. Um, it was not pretty. It was really, really hard. We rented for seven or eight years and moved. My son in high school at the time said, you realize I've lived in a different house every year of high school? And I'm like, yeah, but they were in the same county. So, you know, you're good. Some kids have to move across the world. So, And you had a house. Yeah, and you yeah. had a house. Yeah. Well, most of the time. There was a point where we were homeless, too. So, I mean, I have so many facets to my story. But yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been a long and a hard thing. But, you know, a minute ago you were saying that God was bringing you clients that were ready to be healed. I think there comes a time in when we've been walking this thing out for a long time that God begins to give us our heart's desires and it's so beautiful and we get to walk in those and they line up with his yeah and and it seems like it was never going to happen yeah because things that are happening right now for me were things that I thought about in my 20s and 30s maybe not in this way I mean I I never thought I was going to be doing what I'm doing it's not that right but the way that I'm working with people and what I'm being allowed to see and witness and be a part of is stuff that I, I mean, it was in my wildest dreams way back then, and now it's happening now, and that's what you said is happening. I do, I see things, in, and you know, it's not because we've just sat back and said, oh, you know, God will move whenever he wants to. No, we've done the work, we've, you know, and I don't, I'm not a workspace person, but we've done the thing, we've kept doing the next thing in front of us to get where we are today, mm-hmm. and at some point, favor and your heart's desires begin to line up and it doesn't always look like what we think it would. I mean, if you would have told me I was going to be in radio even a year ago. Really? So the, your radio ago, is new? It is new. Okay, we'll have to talk about that more. Yes. Let's flip back just for okay. a second and talk about what happened 
after that day mm-hmm. and at when, when you realized this was bigger than your marriage? Walk that piece out. Um, Carrie, that's going to be a whole other show. Is this, it? Seriously. Okay, let's see where you we're at here. That, well, you know, we have, I can probably do it in a, in a quick way, but there's so much to that. We, my husband did come to know the Lord. It was wonderful. It was great. He came to the end of himself and his self-sufficiency. He was a very successful business person and um, didn't really have a need for a God, mm-hmm. you know? He, he his success well, was good. God. Yeah. <laughs> it was good. And he did, but he came to the end of himself and um, did find God. And it was another year or so before I ever talked to him about what had happened because I knew that he didn't know about forgiveness mm-hmm. and the Lord had never said, Hey, you need to share this with him. And so I didn't, but there came a day right as I was getting ready to step into ministry on staff at a local church. Oh my goodness. And he was like, uh, now. I was like, no, (laughs) no, I'm getting ready to do this. I'll never be able to do this. Yeah. But you know what? It was the point that I would never be able to minister out of that place and say, hey, I see you. I've been you before. I know what it feels like to be ashamed and feel so much guilt and so much hurt and be afraid to even be who you are, Yeah, you know? And mm-hmm. I never would have been able to minister out of that place had I not come clean with him. Well, you know, in, in counseling, we always say that you can never take somebody farther than you've been willing to go yourself. Yeah. And it's very true. And in fact, you can be a hindrance to other people because if somebody comes in and you're on staff somewhere and there's a woman who has struggled with this and you have not exposed this, the shame in you is going to then shame her and silence her and not allow her the healing she needs. Yeah, and I truly believe that when we experience something, a breakthrough, um, a victory, that we have the anointing to be able to give that to someone else yeah. and help them to see that it's possible. Yeah. Well, and I, I get it too, because with our story of having to place a child in another home, I remember at that at that moment in that season, I had been teaching Bible study at church and I thought, I've just disqualified myself. I will never be in ministry again, mm-hmm. you know? And yeah. <laughs> yeah. here we are. Yeah, yeah. and, and the reason are. people can talk to you and the reason people can talk to me is because they know we've been through it and we're not hiding it. And it's just part of who we are, but we're, we're good. I think authenticity is such an important piece of telling our story. You know, we're talking about sharing mm-hmm. our stories. I think that authenticity is such an important part of our stories mm-hmm. because when we can ourselves be authentic about our own lives and our own story with other people and not try to cover or hide mm-hmm. the, the ugly parts of, you know, ourselves and our story, we give other people the freedom right. to say, hey, I, I'm messy too. Yeah. You know, I was having lunch with a friend a couple of years ago and over the meal, uh, we were just kind of talking about what we do and all of that. And she said something that really hit me. She said, you look like hope to those people. Oh, that's and I thought, beautiful. And I was just thinking that for you, you look yeah. like hope. I hope for so. anybody who has, yeah. is going through this now, or is just going through a mess now and you think your life will never be better. You know, look, I mean, you're beautiful and you've got this, you're successful and I know that it's not perfect. I know that. But to come from a place like that, where you've literally been homeless, you've been unfaithful, you've had a a one ruined marriage and then another one that almost, and I know that there's more. Oh, yeah. And (laughs) and yet here you are doing all of this. It's pretty amazing. He's amazing and I am grateful to be able to share my story and to have different avenues to share Mm -hmm. it now through writing through my radio show through you know speaking at events and things and just you know over coffee with with women who need to know that they're not alone yeah does that we did that (laughs) (laughs) we did that yeah 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 Yeah. tell me a little bit about your writing uh, quickly about my writing. Let's see. I stepped out into public writing about three years ago. I started a blog at amyelaine.com and I just started writing about really some of the stuff that I was learning in the Bible and 
kind of sort of devotionals, a little bit Bible study, a okay. little bit, you know, it's grown. In kind of introspection and just, yeah. just sharing what you're learning. Yes, and then I, I have begun to write a little bit more, I guess, I don't know what the word for it would be, but maybe a little bit more out there, you mm -hmm. know, on mm -hmm. some bigger topics mm -hmm. and some things that, you know, the Lord is like, yeah, you can talk about more that. More courageously. Yeah, more courageously. More That's yeah. it. Yes, yeah. a little bit more bravely. Stepping into it. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. Um, bold. Yes, a little bit bolder without the fear of, oh my gosh. You what know? are they going to think? Yeah. And, you know, my audience has grown and they have gotten to know me. So I'm just beginning to unearth some stuff that is helpful to them. And I know that, once again, using our stories and all the elements of it yeah. can help other people to find the hope that they need, the grace that they're looking for, and just the encouragement to keep yeah. walking it out. Yes. This because, life. Keep because if we stop... <laughs> Yeah. You know, growth, you're either moving forward or you're going backward. You know, you might stay stagnant for just a little bit, but then you're you're going to go one or the other. Yeah. You can't, you you don't just stay stagnant. Yeah. You know, you're, you're going to be moving forward or backward, and it's so important to keep growing. I think one of the hardest things to do is to continue that forward momentum, and, to, and sometimes it's really scared that unknown and the, that next step with mm -hmm. whatever is going on in your life is not easy. Yeah, you know? and I think there are times that it is important to take a breather. Sure. You know, if you've been doing a lot of hard work for a while, kind of just sit back and enjoy it. Yes. And just, <sighs> it's like climbing a mountain, you know, you get to the top, stop and look around a little bit, take some time, and then dig back in. Yes. You I think that's so true. Back I think it's important to be in the here and now and to enjoy the process. Well, and we're both, I don't know exactly how old you are, but I know we're, we're both... You know. Girl, I'm getting ready to have my 50th birthday. Okay. In like I'm, 34 days or But something. who's counting? <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to be 55 this summer. So yeah. we're both, you yeah. know, around there. And yeah, around there. We're still working. Oh, yeah. We're still growing. We're still learning. Oh, so yeah. young people <laughs> who are watching, you know, don't stop learning and growing. Don't think, oh, shoo, got through that one. I made it. Now I'm, I've arrived. You know, no, your whole life is learning and growing. And if it's not, you know, how sad. Yeah, I think that's true. I think that once you, it, I think that's a, one of the greatest lies that we can actually believe, getting back to some lies, is that we've arrived. You know? <laughs> I thought now. that I had arrived. I thought <laughs> I was past being a cheater. You know? I did. There, It's a, it's a weird oxy moron of a, mm -hmm. of a thought mm -hmm. process but you know in one breath I thought I've arrived I'll never do that again and the other breath I thought oh I'm always a cheater I mean it was like this how can you be bold yeah yeah but that's what it's like when you yeah. haven't gotten healing yeah that is a perfect place for us to take a pause yeah so we're gonna stop and I want to thank you so much I know this is this is a tough topic it is tough, but I'm learning to talk about it and, yeah. you know, just share. And well, I want to thank story. you for your thank vulnerability you. and for the trust and the honor that you've given us in sharing it. So Absolutely. thank you so much. And we are going to invite Amy Aline back to do another podcast. We'll continue this conversation. So until next time, thanks so much for joining us. I'm Carrie O'Toole, and this is Broken and Brilliant.